What's up, this is Bunny Muffins. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to get to Masters with only using reroll comps. So we're gonna be playing four or five games. I haven't decided yet, but we're gonna do one cost reroll, two cost reroll, three cost reroll. All the rerolls are gonna be covered here and reroll is very strong in the meta right now, but even when they're not, they're still a useful strategy to know. And frankly, they're very easy to play. So anyone can do this. Uh, you just have to know which ones to go for, know what item combinations are good for each reroll comp and uh, pretty much go from there but we have four or five replays for you guys today but we're gonna start in diamond one right now we're diamond one zero lp and i'm gonna buy the dianas i'm gonna build hand of justice because hand of justice can be built on pretty much anyone um, though i will say that you shouldn't build the item during this neutral round because you could potentially get uh like a diana chosen after this and in which case i would want the hand of justice on her but you know sometimes you're lazy sometimes you make mistakes but uh yeah that's how it is right now I get a bunch of dudes here, don't really need any of those, so I'm just going to hold on to it, can't really make interest. And now the game finally starts. I have the Diana 2, probably want to go for the uh, Brawler start here, or Keeper start. Both are pretty good. Keepers are generally a little stronger early game. I found that Brawlers are lacking right now, but depends on the patch. Another thing we could try to do is make interest, because we have 2, 4, 6, 8 gold, so we can make 10 gold here. And that could be a viable strategy if we want to play the Diana reroll. Uh, right now, in this current meta reroll is very very strong so it is okay to kind of open fort and kind of force this and i don't have to go diana nasus can use that item uh, though not that well i could pivot into other comps because hand of justice works in pretty much any comp uh i could just go standard from here and not play reroll at all since i didn't like go into this only going for reroll because if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen it's just how life is sometimes all right so now we're into the next shop Dragon Soul Tristana, no thank you, but I'm going to pick up some units just to play on my board while I keep open fording. In case you guys didn't know what open fording is, uh, I'm doing it right now. You guys might hear that term a lot or refer to me saying that, and it pretty much just means sacrificing your board and life in order to gain a lot of gold in the long run. So you notice we made 10 interests right on stage 2-1, and if we could have made it to 20 gold on stage 2-2, we would have done that, but we couldn't do that this turn. Uh, but open fording is a very effective way to get a lot of gold in order to find a comp later. A lot of people do a strategy called like rolling down on stage 3-2. And you could go ahead and do that. You just lose the entire early game, have a five game loss streak, and then you level up to level six on stage 3-2 and then roll down to like 20 or 10 gold or sometimes even zero to find a comp and stabilize for the mid game. We hit the Yasuo chosen here, so we could go for something like Yasuo reroll. Depends how many we get throughout the course of the game. So since I found this, I ended up selling my... Katarina and my Dianas just to get to 20 gold and again since I'm open fording uh, I think that's fine because I could just force Yasuo from here because I have the hand of justice I had first pick on the carousel I went ahead and grabbed a sword we could build something like Zeke's we could build infinity edge for Yasuo uh, both are good it keeps us a little bit flexible and I'm not going to slam any items because I am currently trying to lose unfortunately we won a game here so our lose streak is kind of ruined I don't really know how we won that game because our team was pretty weak but you know sometimes it happens um, but yeah, I picked up the sword because Zeke's is really strong because I could go something like Kale. Like, I'm not fully committed to the reroll yet because I don't have that many Yasuos, but I am committed to the open fort. I sold the rest of my board uh, just because I didn't really think I could win, honestly, with uh, with my team comp there. So now we're on the stage right before the PvE. I'm going to go ahead and sell to 40. So we got a ton of gold, not too much life. We're at 80 right now, but other people are lower. There's my man's at 74 here, so... A little concerned for him, honestly, but uh, you got to just worry about yourself. We're looking fine right now. I think that guy's running fortune. All right, so here's where things get a little interesting. We are at 50 gold, and we want to keep making interest, but we need to beat the Krugs as well. So I go ahead, buy some dudes, and just throw them on the board because we just need to beat the Krugs. If we lose to them, we, we probably lose the game because we will have less items and less gold than everyone else. So I just picked up the Vanguards and the Fiora, and Fiora's nice to tank some of these... Krugs because she has the invulnerability so she could buy a lot of time for your damage units to uh, kill the first golem and then work on those other units afterwards so we get another sword here really good death blade pretty good in this meta uh, pretty good in a lot of metas honestly um, so oh, three swords okay what do we do here hmm. and a belt okay so right when I see this I remember playing this game oh yeah if you guys didn't know this is a replay I'm not playing live that's why you see my mouse here um, and it's better to do it this way because then we could really look back at my plays. I'm not distracted. 
um, trying to explain myself while also thinking about the game. But here, I notice I have a Hand of Justice and I have two Zeke's Heralds, which means I should go for some sort of attack speed composition. Kale is the first one that comes to mind. So I'm going to play accordingly to that here by leveling up and stop uh, trying to do the whole reroll strategy. Uh, unfortunately, my team here is not that strong and I didn't have much time because I was thinking throughout the whole turn. So I just picked up a Kennen. It's a random Kennen, no synergies, and just throw the Zeke's on him because I'm going to uh, sell him right after. I also dropped the sword on the Yasuo because I'm going to be selling him because I am not going Yasuo anymore because I have two Zeke's. And you can't really use Zeke's Herald in Yasuo comps because he needs to be isolated from people and Zeke's Herald only buffs people that are adjacent to them. Uh, but I sell those guys, stay at 50 gold, and here's where it gets pretty important. Remember how I told you guys, open fort, go to level 6 on 3-2 and roll down. We're going to be doing that right here. And we're going to see what we're going to get. We're just looking for something to stabilize. So I'm going to sell the Yasuo because we might get a Chosen. And then I'm going to roll. I'm buying Kindred. I'm buying the Divines. I'm buying the Brawlers because uh, Shivana is really good. And we get pretty lucky here. Uh, you guys will see in a second. Uh, Sivir is a really good item holder for those as well for the two Zeeks. And we get the Brawler Shivana. So I'm just going to go ahead, pick that, and start doing a reroll Shivana. Uh, that's pretty much like the best thing you could do uh, at this point in the game. And yeah, I throw in four Brawlers, put the Zeeks on the Nautilus because I'm going to sell him and then the Hodge on Shivana. So Hodge, really good on Shivana. Best in slot Shivana is definitely like Runon's Deathblade and then the Hodge, uh, some sort of item combination like that. Uh, but honestly, it depends because you don't want to force Shivana. You can only really play her if you get a Brawler chosen, and that doesn't always happen. Luckily, this game we have it, uh, but that's why Hodge is so good. It fits in every single composition, whereas if I built Runon's Deathblade, if I'm going for Kale, she can't really use Runon's Deathblade that well. Uh, Whereas Runon's Deathblade can only be used for like Shivana and Olaf, for example. It fits in some other builds, but it might not be like super best in slot, you know? Uh, but Shivana and all those other champions I mentioned, they could all use Hodge. That's why it's really strong. So starting crit might not be a bad idea in this type of meta. So now I get the Brawlers in. I'm really trying to decide who gets the Zeke's Heralds. Uh, I decided on putting it on Nunu, but I think maybe Vi might have been better. I like Nunu when I was playing the game because I was like, oh, more health for Nunu means that he can eat more people because Nunu eats people based on his uh, health compared to the enemy health. And so the more health you have on Nunu, the more he's going to eat. But I think Vi is actually a better holder for the Zeeks because Vi, you always want to put Vi next to Shivana because she reduces uh, or her ability reduces armor of the enemy team. So it gives a little bit of armor penetration to Shivana and Shivana's probably going to be attacking whoever's next to her and so Vi's next to Shivana, she's going to be re reducing that person's armor. So we're on the carousel, we're second pick. Remember how I said Runons is really good so I'm going to go ahead and pick up a bow. If there was a sword there I would have taken that instead because we have a sword on the bench so we could build a death blade with that. But Runons is probably the best item on Shivana because of the way her ability works. Runons applies on hit effects and uh, Shivana, well she has a very good on hit effect in her kit. So you Definitely want to be building that. So from here, we could kind of just AFK each of the turns until uh, we really feel threatened. I don't really see us losing any of these games because we have one item on Shivana, two great support items on the Nunu, and then we have the Brawler chosen, and nothing really stops that in the mid game. So we're going to skip to the Wolf Camp. We won all those other rounds. Let's see what drops here. And there are two orbs. And holy cow, it's my birthday today, so they gave me a force of nature. That's pretty good. So just go ahead, build that, sell the TF. Uh, yeah, there's... I mean, sometimes it happens, you know? Sometimes it happens. So we're just going to level up here. It doesn't really cost us that much gold, and we could sell something if we just so happen to lose. And we could actually put an extra unit in here, so I think we put in the second Shivana. Maybe we should play the Yumi, because Yumi gives attack speed over the Tom Kench, because... Uh, you don't need seven brawler that doesn't do anything so i should have replaced either the maokai or the tom kench for the yumi uh, but it is what it is it's not that big of an issue so items giant slayer very good in this meta because everyone else is re-rolling whenever you get a lot of three stars or the way to counter three stars one way is giant slayer and that's why a lot of people especially in pro play are building giant slayer a bunch i haven't seen giant slayer pick up in lower elos though uh, just one thing to note and the reason why they're doing it is because everyone's re-rolling so if you're in a lobby where other people are not re-rolling or they don't have high health units 
Uh, you don't need the Giant Slayer, even though people are saying it's best in slot. Always adapt to whatever you're playing against because other people's gaming gaming experience is going to be a lot different from yours. One thing we could build is a Guardian Angel on Shivana. However, since we're so strong, I want to go for best in slot on Shivana. So I really want that Deathblade. I really want that Runons because, again, I don't feel threatened here. Uh, so since we're level 8 now, I'm going to play the 2 Mystic and the Spirit uh, just to buff up my team as much as possible. So again, positioning wise, I'm putting my Vi as close to Shivana as possible. It's not as good as being right next to the Shivana, because you see here they're like kind of attacking different targets, but it's better than nothing. Um, I guess like Nunu didn't even attack the same target. It happens sometimes, but if they are near each other, it generally gives you the best chance to win. And my Cho'Gath just completely whiffed his ult there, so I don't know what he's doing. A little unlucky because I think we lose this fight and that ends our losing streak or ends our win streak. And a little unlucky based on that Cho'Gath ult because he clearly was targeting a pike that already ulted instead of a pike that's about to ult. In my opinion, we could watch a replay, but yeah, sometimes it happens. So that really sucks. We're at 61 life. Uh, what a lot of people do, I forgot to mention this before. When you roll for Shivana or slow roll for her, a lot of people do it on level 7. However, since we're so strong, I believe we could get to level 8 and slow roll after that because uh, there's nothing threatening us. So we don't need to roll on 7 and like really, really, really try to hit that Shivana 3. We could take our time, go to 8. If we get a lot of Shivanas, we could go for it. If not, we could go to level 9 and sell Shivana and put the items on someone else. A lot of different options to consider here. And again, that's only because our team is super strong because we have two Zeke's Heralds, which are extremely powerful. We got the six Brawler really early. We have the Chosen Shivana, and we have a Hand of Justice with potentially two more items for her, both from the bow and from the sword there. So that's why I'm not really too scared uh, to like level up and roll down or like roll down to zero. And I just pre-level, go to level eight. I'm going to slow roll at level eight. You can't do this in all your games. So uh, you just have to figure out which games you can do it in and which games you cannot do it in. So we wound up getting the Negatron on Shivana because, again, I always talk about Runons being the best item, so I just slapped that on her, slapped the sword on her because sword, there's so many good items that can be built on Shivana. but I guess if I get an RFC, you could kind of hold off a little bit. Again, since we're super strong, we can be super greedy. A lot of people are greedy all the time, which is definitely a mistake. Uh, you can only be greedy in games that you're allowed to be. And this is one of those games, so uh, you just need to recognize that. It just comes with experience. There's no set rule. Um, you just look at the fights. We're destroying everyone. The only fight we lost was because of a Cho'Gath fluke, and uh, we would have beat that guy probably 4-0 to zero because we had four units up at that time. Um, it just so happened that Cho'Gath missed, and then his two units 2v4 afterwards. So I'm jumping over to the Wraith camp just because like, we're not doing anything special. We're just leveling up. I don't know if you noticed the level bar over here. We're just slowly leveling up the whole time. Um, oh, another thing, we got Force of Nature from the previous camp, so it's like extra unit, perfect items, it's insane stuff, you know? Uh, we even get a Shivana from an orb, it does not get better than this, guys. Uh, let's see what else we get here, we get another spatula, and we get another bow. So Giant Slayer's good, you could do Duelist, you could do Divine Spat, uh, you could do Vanguard Spat, lots of, lots of good options here, honestly. I'm not really too sure what the best thing to build is, but we hit level 8. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start pressing D, which is the reroll button, and I'm going to be looking for Shivanas and all sorts of 3 stars now. We're only 2 off. If you are low health, if you are like one of these guys down here, you're rolling to 0 right now. I say if you're below 30 health at this point in the game, you're rolling to 0 finding these uh, last 2 Shivanas. Um, but yeah, Giant Slayer on her, Vanguard Spat on someone else. I can maybe run something like Orn because I'm running uh, three Elderwood. So I could do, instead of this Vagar, put Orn in and then have the Vanguard Spatula maybe on uh, my Cho'Gath, for example. That's something you could do. But um, I don't build the Vanguard Spat item yet just because it doesn't do anything for me. And honestly, I'm selling this Yumi, so uh, having the item on her doesn't really hurt me that much. Okay, we are back to rolling. So I'm going to be buying all the brawlers. If you're a brawler, you're going to get bought, all right? I'm looking for set for the 8 brawler power spike and uh, Elderwood. So Rakan's better than Vagar because Vagar's kind of eh, you know? Um, I'd prefer Lulu, but you can't always get what you want. There's a Yumi too. Uh, do you sell the Yumi with the chain vest? I think so here. Uh, I don't really think it matters that much, but I do want this 
Vanguard spat eventually on my Cho'Gath and not the Yumi, so maybe it was fine to do there. Again, since we're so much further ahead than everyone else, uh, we don't, we're not that nervous. Like, this guy's, holy cow, this guy's weak. Um, this is a master board, by the way, at 5-2. He has level 1 Aesol, like, three other 2 stars, and he has, like, just a mage back line at level 8. It seems pretty weak to me. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It seems like a very weak board, but I thought it would be a little more difficult at Masters, but I, I guess we're in Diamond 1. Maybe it's not um, the players haven't adapted that well to the new meta yet, uh, but we have the set, so now we could play the 8 Brawlers. So we get Tom Kenshin there. We are keeping the Spirits because Spirit gives attack speed. Uh, if I didn't have Kindred 2, maybe I'd play the Shen instead because um, like Mystic is better for survivability on Shivana. Uh, we hit the Rakan here, but he's too late, so I'm just going to sell him. Roll one more time. Do we hit the Shivana? We do not, but there is a Nunu, so we could potentially go for Nunu 3. It's not that important, but, eh, you know, uh, we really just need the Shivana. And then we could decide, do we want to go for other 3 stars, or do we fast 9 from there? Most likely it's a fast 9 after the Shivana hit. We're looking at the fights here. He's perma-disarmed, but once he starts going, like, man, he just rips through everyone. It's crazy. Ah, oh, man, Shivana's awesome. Oh, dude, the Talon got destroyed. Talon had Giant Slayer, and at least I think he did. And he did not kill the Brawler team. Very interesting. Okay, so for the item here, I'd want the set, but that got taken. I think the actual move is taking the Giant Slayer here to deny Giant Slayer. Instead, I go for the Zephyr, and I think that's a mistake. So... A lot of people on carousels, they only look for what helps them, but sometimes you need to look for what hurts your enemy more. And in this case, I think taking the Giant Slayer would have been much better for me because like Giant Slayer is the direct counter to me, so I should be trying to deny that item. And it's not like I can't use it. I could put it on like the set, for example, and it wouldn't be that terrible on him. I sell the vibe, pick up the Zillion. Since Zillion's broken and he's really strong, I'm going to put him in over the level 2 Kindred, but... Apart from that, we're going to keep rolling down and try to find this last Shivana because we're only one off. It could be argued I should roll until I hit it, and I actually think that's a correct play, but I'm a little slow here, so um, you got to give me a break, you know? So now I Zephyr the Aurelian Soul, and it is a GG. I don't even have Shivana 3 yet, but yeah, these guys have like pretty weak boards. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah, cleaned up right there. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So new turn, new reroll, same thing. It's That's what I like about reroll, very methodical. And you just kind of do the same thing every time and go from there. Uh, it's a new turn, you just reroll until you hit, and then you decide what to do after that. There are certain times where you have to decide where, when to all in, but since we're so healthy, we don't have to do that yet. But just keep that in mind when you're playing your game. You need to decide what health threshold uh, you are at to really decide one to all in and uh, because that's going to end up deciding most of the skill in that game. Uh, this is a Zed 3 star. That's a little scary because he's got Giant Slayer and again Giant Slayer is a counter. He's attacking my Shivana, but my Shivana just like autoed him twice I guess and he died and yeah this is pretty cake roll from here. I end up getting a Last Whisper from the Rift Herald and here it's just a matter of leveling up and just playing literally anything. I'm going to just, yeah, just put the last whisper on by. Who really cares? Uh, but I should be leveling up here. If I wait a turn, maybe that's a little too greedy because I want to put people away. But it really doesn't matter just because I'm so much stronger than everyone else. So I decide not to level. I do hit the Zephyr, which is really nice. I didn't need to to win this game, but uh, because he's all clumped up, Cho'Gath's a really good counter against that. And uh, he should probably put like some bait units out or something like that. Because I'm pretty sure Cho'Gath's targeting is random. Uh, but we beat him there, waiting on these other guys. And yeah, this last person, we beat them before, so it shouldn't really be too big of an issue. He's got 10 gold. We're about to hit level 9, and we have like 93 gold. Holy cow, guys. <laughs> Do we go for Vi 3? I don't know. I don't really think it matters. I think we just play literally any unit and go from there. I'm going to, since he's a Zed player, I'm going to go ahead and backline some of my units. I put the Sejuani in to get Vanguard. And I'm literally just uh, rolling down for that. For Vanguard, yeah, I forgot. Whenever you're in a 1v1 situation, you look for counters. He's playing Zed, so armor's the best against that. 
So I just put my vanguards in the back. I have four of them. They got a ton of armor. And hopefully that should be enough to kill Zed. Unfortunately, I missed the Zephyr here. I thought it would hit the other person next to the Diana, but it just doesn't matter. Um, just because we're so far ahead. Uh, so that's how you can snowball a game from stage 3-2. Does he actually beat me? No, he does not. Okay, and that's GG right there. Again, this was at Diamond 1-0 LP. We're going to hop onto my friend's account now. Um, well, it was his game, but we're going to analyze his replay. And we're going to see how he does with one cost rerolls. And that's kind of his favorite type of comp. Stay tuned for that. All right, guys, new game, new reroll. Uh, my fr again, this is my friend's account. He got the Yasuo chosen early, so we are going Yasuo. When you see a chosen like this this early, that's a sign to go for it. The other guy got a Wukong. You could go for him too. Um, it just depends on the meta. Right now, Yasuo is really strong. We don't have items for him yet, but again, since you can kind of just turn your brain off, force a comp, I highly recommend doing it if you do get the chance to reroll uh, one of these strong champions. So the other champions you could do reroll with are something like Diana, Nasus, uh, Wukong's good. In terms of one cost, like also Nidalee's good now for Warlords or Sharpshooters. Um, all, all those types of champions you could do rerolls with, and it helps to get the Chosen because, I mean, you get three copies of it. You can't, it doesn't get better than that, you know? Bonus stats and free copies. We're just going to get some gold here. We get the Aurelia. Aurelia is really nice when you go for Duelist because you often end up playing Jax uh, to get to two Duelists and Fiora to get to four. And guess who is good with those? Uh, Aurelia, because she's both Divine and Enlightened. So you get kind of like the Master of All or a mix of all synergies there. So we won the last round. Onto the next turn here. We opt to play for the Janna and Aurelia combo because they're both very strong units. So even though they're one starred, because they're two cost and three cost units and they provide a lot of utility for your team, they're often pretty good to run at this point in the game. Despite all that, we did lose the last round, but we see a Duelist, we're going to buy a Duelist. We see a Janna, we're going to buy a Janna. Uh, not too much else to do there. We're going to play two Jannas because they are better than Fiora. So even though Fiora is a duelist, like Janna is just a broken unit early, especially like Chosen Janna. If you ever get that, that's going to be a really nice game for you. Now onto the carousel. So we had a tier, a sword, and a Negatron cloak. So what we really like on Reroll Yasuo, and he played Reroll Yasuo all of set four also, but Quicksilver Sash is our favorite item because Yasuo's melee, he's going to hit by, he's going to get hit by a lot of crowd control. So you really need that Quicksilver Sash to really make him pop up. Also, people run Adept, and you don't get affected by the Adept nerf, or the Adept debuff, which slows your attack speed if you have a Quicksilver Sash. So that's the most important item we think on him. And crits are really good because you could build Hand of Justice and Infinity Edge, so crit is just overall the best item for Yasuo. So we go ahead and pick that up there. But we're not gonna build the Infinity Edge, we're gonna build the Quicksilver Sash because we know 100% that we are going to be building that. We do put in the Callista, but it might be argued that we should sell the Callista and just put the item on Yasuo right away. Because for Duelist, while it is good, we kind of have like no utility here. Like Callista is kind of bad right now. You could only really play her in a cultist build with perfect items and like some Zeeks on Sivir. Otherwise, she just kind of gets outclassed. So even though she's a three cost, I'd much rather have like a second Aurelia, for example. But we were saying like, oh, like maybe four Duelists is good. So we're just trying to play around with that. Turns out it's horrible. He never rendered. And yeah, we got, we got 3 0 Feels Feels kind of bad. Also, no Yasuos and no gold. Remember last game when we were kind of open fording? We had like a ton more gold than this. But at least he's got a little more health because he kind of won some rounds. Normally when you do reroll comps, you don't want to win early. But, you know, sometimes it happens. So, yeah, next round, we just sell the Callista to make interest. We went from 27 to 30 gold, and we just swapped the QSS onto Yasuo. So we lost the last round. Uh, here's what we got from the Krugs. We get another crit, which is really nice. We're going to build Infinity Edge with that. Um, or we could build Hand of Justice. Eh, it's tough to say, but I think Infinity Edge is the best item. So with the bow, we could build something like Titan's Resolve, Infinity Edge, Titan's Resolve, QSS, probably one of the strongest item combinations on Yasuo. Um, you could do things like double-handed justice, QSS, uh, all those types of combinations work really well. So now we are at the reroll stage. Normally in the turn before, you want to roll a little bit if you are above 50 gold. But again, since this economy was pretty bad, we only had 50 gold at that point in the game. So it wasn't really worth it to roll. But 
this turn we were at 60 something gold. We roll down to 50 until we buy all the Yasuo's in the shop and rinse repeat from there. Fiora's actually a really nice person to three star as well. So if you get a lot of Fiora's, definitely go for her too when you are going for duelists. You guys can learn more about these comps on my website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. And I update them every Friday. It's like all the comps you should be playing for that week. And if there are a lot of changes to the comp, I'll let you know there. So even if you guys are like watching this, maybe like a couple months later, then when I release this video, like always check there for what specific units to play. So here, do we actually win? Yeah, okay, nice, nice. Actually, I don't know if that's nice. See, his streak is kind of really bad because he won a lot in stage two. So again, the economy is not going to be going to match up with that. So new turn, new rolls, pick up the Janna. He likes to buy all the one cost because it like optimizes your rolls. It's very slight advantage, but it's an advantage nonetheless. Um, if you guys didn't know, there are only a certain amount of each unit in in the game. So there are only like, I think, 39 Yasuos or something like that. And when you buy all the other one cost units, it increases your odds of getting a Yasuo by like ever so slightly. I think it's not worth the time to do. A lot of pro players, they don't do it either. But if you have nothing better to do, if you have in unlimited time in your turn, you might as well do it. So now as a carousel, we wanted the chain vest. Don't end up getting it. So we're just going to grab a tier uh, just to build a utility item later. We could build a blue buff on someone. Maybe locket was the best item here because we have a rod, but again, no chain vest, so we can't really build that. So these two items, they're kind of weak to say the least. Uh, I guess we could build a hand of justice on someone else, but we don't really get that secondary carry until Yone, and that is much, much later into the game. So another good thing about this is that Trindamir is a duelist, so we could go ahead and play him for six duelists, but... Again, like the duelist buffs are not really that strong unless we have some tanks and we're just like completely lacking in that department too. Also, it's pretty late in the game. It's stage three, five. We only have five Yasuos. Most people hit Yasuo three sometime like around now and we are very far off. So this is not looking like a great game so far. On the trend mirror, we're going to go ahead and build the blue buff there because we plan on selling him and putting the blue buff on someone else later. Uh, just because, like, he doesn't really need it, you know? I guess it's actually not that bad of an item on him. Maybe maybe blue buff Trindamir is good, but I definitely prefer sword items on him and, like, some sort of tank item like Guardian Angel. So again, new turn, new rolls, no Yasuos, feels bad. So uh, if this ever happens to you, you just got to stay faithful. I remember watching him play this game, and he was, like, complaining the entire time. He's like, I have no Yasuos. Like, what am I going to do? It's like, this is an eighth already. I just told him, you just got to believe, stay positive. So let's see how that works out. So it didn't work out. We lost. We were on a three loss streak. We're getting pretty low. We're at 48 life. We end up finding one Yasuo there. So maybe we could hit it on 4-1. Not really too sure. But we do have to all in very soon. And probably it's going to be next turn. The reason why we want to all in next turn is because we're very close to getting the Yasuo. And it's like we're low health. So it's a combination of the two that makes us really want to do it. And right now... We could have double nico the Yasuo, but since we're so close to Fiora, we might as well just roll down and try to see if we hit both of them. Um, but since we hit the Yasuo natural, we decide not to go for the Fiora, even though we just need one of her, just because we don't really have that great of items for her, and she's not that important for the comp. And since we hit the Yasuo now, we're hoping we could fast 8 in order to find Yone and then double Nico Yone to like pretty much guarantee first place. We have a blue buff for Yone, so that's like one of the best items for him. So we're really, really looking forward to that. Uh, we also have two items on Yasuo. If you do not have two very good items on Yasuo at this point in the game, you are in trouble, in which case you probably should roll down to maybe 30 gold to find that Fiora 3 and then put the blue buff on her, for example. So this is one of the cases where I can't say new turn, new rolls because we're not re-rolling anymore. Uh, after you hit everything, you want to try to power level up. Whenever you're going for the one cost, three stars, once you hit it, try to level up as fast as possible. So we're going to be looking to get to level seven as fast as possible, level eight as fast as possible. And again, this is all because we really need Yone because he's exile and Yasuo is in exile and they gain lifesteal when you get that bonus. It's like one of the biggest power spikes for the duelist comp. So that's what we're looking out for the most. Uh, this guy got Kale 2 on 4-2 with 40 gold level seven. This guy, we might have to... We're going to be seeing him the whole game, aren't we? But he has Warlord Spat for some reason. I'm really confused about that. Has anyone seen Warlord Kale before? I personally have not, but I guess it's working out for him if you hit it. So nothing to buy in this shop. We just leveled up to 
uh, 22 XP. Again, we're not leveling up all the way because uh, we'll be below 50 gold. And since we really want to get to level eight, not level seven, we want to maximize our gold to speed up to level eight instead of getting the temporary power spike at level seven. We get a chain vest on the carousel and we get a lucky lantern. So we build the Titans for sure. These other items, it's a little weird. We could go for a Morgana Morello because we have a Morgana already. Uh, it's a popular version going for Enlightened for Duelists in this comp uh, because you don't always have to go six or eight Duelists. A lot of people think like, oh, I'm going Duelists. I have to pick up all the Duelists. But in reality, a lot of the Duelists suck. Like Fiora 1, not that great. Callista, horrible. Jax, he's pretty good. Um, Yasuo is good if you get him three star. Trindamir, not that great unless you itemize him. Lee Sin, very good. So it's like there are only really three good duelists, you know? So you don't need to uh, stress out and like, oh, I need to get to eight duelists with like duelist chosen and duelist spatula. You could run this other version, which is four enlightened, four duelists. There's another version that's four divine, four duelists. Lots of different options there for you. Uh, depends what units you get, depends what items you have. But here, since we have the Morella, we have the Morgana on our bench, we're going to try the four enlightened version. Uh, so we get another one here. And again, we are not going to be rolling because we want to get to level 8 ASAP. So we're going to look to do that on either 5-1 or 5-2, especially since we are low health here. I know it's a little risky. A lot of people here, they panic. They're like, oh, we're at 30 life. We have to level up all the way. But honestly, other people's boards right now are pretty weak. This might be a diamond thing. So if you're in masters already, um, you might want to roll faster. But like for everyone who's not in masters yet, like their boards are going to be pretty weak. So you don't need to stress too much about rolling to zero if you have like if you're missing one or two upgrades. Right now we were just missing Aurelia upgrade and Morgana upgrade and uh, an extra unit. We had Callista in there, but it really isn't that big of a deal just because again. Like, people aren't, like, super, super strong. So we didn't get smashed throughout all of Stage 4. We went 2 and 3, which isn't ideal. But, like, at 19 life, we potentially have 2 lives until Stage 6, in which case we only have 1 life, really. We hit Jax here. We almost have Jax 3. We also have double Nico, so we know we're going to power spike, like, super, super hard once we, once we level up and roll down. Uh, whenever you have Nico, you do want to use them as soon as possible. So it is possible to level up to eight on stage four or five and then roll down to zero if you are getting worried. Um, but luckily we won another round there. So uh, we're kind of saved in that sense. So maybe it was a mistake not to roll down on stage four or five now that I think about it again. We get another sword here. We get a chain vest. So that's guardian angel for someone. Oh, tons of items this game. I don't know what's going on here. I guess the Lucky Lantern gave us like three items, I think. I, I kind of forget. It's kind of hard to decide what to build here. Uh, so we level up. We skip the Trindomir for some reason. Um, why did we sell Swain? I don't know. Okay, we got a new Trindomir. We put in Mystic. Shen gives both, uh, what's it called? Adept and Mystic. Drop the Callista in. Drop the Aurelia. Um, for six duelists, but we really need Yone, and the fact that we're not using the Nikos really, really hurts. So we're going to go ahead, RFC the Callista, and uh, from this point, since we haven't found Yone yet, we're probably just going to run RFC Callista for a while. GA Morgana is pretty good. Redemption's a great item in the late game. A lot of people don't like Redemption in lower elos, but everyone high elo, they love Redemption. So... If you haven't built it in the past, I do recommend trying it out because it gives you a lot of different um, utility later in the game. Because with the Lucky Lanterns, it's really easy to get perfect item carries. I think almost every game, everyone gets perfect item carries uh, pretty much all the time. At least like double-handed justice on their carries, which works with pretty much any character or any comp. So after that, you really want to focus on utility items. So luckily for us, we got a blue buff for Janna. We got a Morello for... Morgana, and we got the Redemption now. But a lot of people sleep on Redemption, and I think that's a big mistake. So here, I think Zillion's better than Janna. Um, that's just me, but I, my friend disagreed here. So let me know in the comments which one you think is better. Uh, I, I really insisted on him playing the Zillion, but I think we skip one turn or two turns and play the Janna instead. Luckily, we won that last round. We're still looking for Yone. We have two Nikos on our bench, so... We're going to be donkey rolling every turn. If you guys haven't heard the term donkey roll before, it pretty much just means roll to zero every turn. It's called donkey rolling because it's like, 
I don't know. It's like you're trying to get like lucky or something to to um to get the units you want. Uh, we make a mistake here. We have the Callista there. We should have sold Callista, picked up Trindamir two star, but we were running out of time, so we did not do it in time. We also want to item remover the blue buff to put it on Lee Sin. And RFC Lee Sin works too. If you guys haven't tried it before, it's pretty entertaining to watch. And it's like pretty decent on him too. Considering Callista is useless, we just don't need the RFC on her at all. A pretty good win there. That's the first time she rendered all game. And yeah, he, he realized it was at this point he realized that he missed the two Trindomirs, but that's okay. We're on this carousel here. That Lee Sin is looking mighty fine right there. Trap Claw, fantastic item. It's another one of those utility items where you're like, oh man, I really want to like use that because I already have a full item carry. For some reason, this guy, CN Sky Baba, took the four cost Trap Claw instead of the five cost Trap Claw. We looked at his board. He's not even running Aurelian Soul, so I don't know what he's doing there. Maybe he was win trading for my friend. I have no clue, but like... I don't think he was because I was in call with my friend. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so Lee Sin, swap him, roll down. We hit the Yone and the Lee Sin. So now we buy the Lee Sin, buy the Yone, double Nico Yone, and pretty much have a blast from there. Sell that guy. Put in Yone, double Nico. Swap out the Fior for the Aurelia for three Adept. Magnetic the blue buff onto the Yone, and we are happy from there. Please tell me we get it off. We do. And I did want him to reforge the RFC just because I think it's kind of like a weak item for our team, but we don't get it in time. Uh, so what you can do instead is put the item on someone on your bench and then use the reforger there. It's a slight like mechanical error, I guess, but uh, it ended up not mattering. But in your game, it might matter. So it's a best practice to always reforge on your bench because you cannot use reforger while in combat. But blue buff Yone is so strong. Maybe we should have kept the RFC, put it on Lee Sin. I don't know. We were really fishing for a good Yone item. And we were even debating like selling our Morgana to put GA on him. Uh, it just really, yeah, it just really depends. But we can use it now. Let's see what we get. We get a Chalice of Power. Okay, pretty good. Drop that on Morgana. Not the best since, again, we were really looking for a Yone item, but not the worst because Morgana can use it. It's just unfortunate that she's not buffing that important of units. Like Jax getting AP doesn't matter at all. Lee Sin getting AP, he kicks people off the map anyway. So again, it doesn't matter at all. But, you know, life happens and okay. So let's think about what we want to do here. We could either try to go for level nine because we could pray that we win streak for the rest of the game. Uh, we could try to find a way to fit the Zillion in by dropping the Janna. My friend only wanted to do it if he got Zillion 2 or a Zillion item, but we're going to be looking for Yone items if we ever do make it to the next carousel. I just think Janna, she's good late game, and she does give an attack damage buff, which is what my friend was arguing, but Zillion giving revives to either Yasuo or Yone is just, or even Lee Sin, is just completely devastating. I feel like we have a lot of good Zillion targets uh, to really have like game-changing ultimates, and that's why I prefer him. But again, let me know in the comments which one you guys prefer. We get a Shen there, which is really nice. Ludens, Echo. It's usable on, on what's his name, on Yone, because it's both AP and uh, mana. Not the best effect, because he doesn't CC anyone. Ludens does bonus damage to people who are crowd controlled. But it is what it is. It gives us AP, and that's all we can really ask for at this point in the game. Considering it's a random item, you know, like, who really cares? So we roll down, hit the Shen. Nice. And let's see how we fight against this Cho'Gath 3. A little scary, but this guy also has 71 health, so we have to think a lot about positioning. Luckily, Morgana's really good against this team because Morello does percent uh, max health, and we somehow sneak out the win there. Oh, we finally put in Zillion. Nice. Uh, now it's a new game, and we're scouting. So at this point in the game, we face the guy in first place, so we're most likely facing the guy in third and fourth place. Uh, we just want to position our Yone, uh, in such a way that he hits the most units. And uh, we also want to make sure our Lee Sin is going to be kicking someone important. One thing I like to do is keep my Yasuo and Yon pretty close together because Yon, oftentimes he um, hits the target that Yasuo is targeting and Yon reduces magic resistance and armor of the enemy team. Uh, unluckily, this fight he targeted the Pike, so it was the worst ultimate ever. But, you know, it happens. <laughs> Now we're in a duel versus the Cho'Gath 3. Surprisingly, Cho'Gath 3 doesn't one-shot everything. So what you want to do here, we want to line up the Lee Sin against someone important, either the 
I think Shivana had a QSS, so we want to line him up against the Cho'Gath or someone on the edge just to get a quick kill. Uh, we want the Yone to ult across his team like this, so that's why we put him up there. A um, couple little like important positioning tips that you just need to know. It's like you just kind of have to memorize it. Uh, one thing that we should have done earlier is move the Yasuo next to the Yone, but we forget to do it. Luckily, Yone hits a lot of people, so that there is a chance that Yasuo ends up hitting like the reduced armor targets anyways, but I don't think Cho'Gath actually got hit by the Yone there. But Lee Sin kicks Swain off the board really nice, and our whole team just cleans the rest of them up. Our Shen with the Redemption, I don't think he ever gets good value for some reason this game, because he just never died first. It's kind of weird. <laughs> so here we want the health. Sorry, not the health. The Zephyr. There's a 4-cost Zephyr over there. Uh, but Oh, wait, sorry. It's like, it's a debate. I remember debating this. It was either Yon item or Zephyr. And then we decided since we have Yasuo with QSS and Yon, um, we could put him anywhere. We decided that we did not need the Zephyr uh, because if he gets Zephyr, like there are two of them anyway, so we can't really deny it. And even if he does, like we just really need to dodge with the Yone because if Morgana gets hit, it sucks, but it's whatever. If Lee Sin gets hit, it sucks, but it's whatever. We just really need our Yasuo and Yone to be pretty much carrying the team. So here we're trying to position Lee Sin to kick the Cho'Gath. Um, again, we didn't do the tech where we moved the Yasuo next to our Yone, but uh, we end up doing that later in the game. Uh, we just didn't think about it at the time. A lot of, again, this is why I like doing post-game analysis rather than live game replays, because you're able to think a lot more about the positioning. And we didn't figure out that like strategy until the very end. I don't know if you want to call it strategy, but like that tactic until the very end. And man, this fight is crazy. Oh man. Ah, set got us good there. So we're 19 life. We're going to be nine life now. So luckily again, before, you know how I talked about how we need to have two lives and 19 health is two lives in most cases. So just fortunate there. So we level up, put in a Vladimir, we get Siphoner. It's not that important, but you know, it's better than nothing. When you're at your last life you need to just put anything into the game but it's getting kind of worrisome here i'll be honest with you luckily he doesn't have shivana 3 but hey i'd take a chogath 3 he still has a nico on his bench i don't know how he hit the chogath i know we got great rolls too because we got the Lee Sin 2 with the yone 2 but like man that's <laughs> that uh his his comp is crazy you know uh, so here we put the yasuo in the back put the Lee Sin up front unlucky that he gets a tom kench or the orange so he doesn't really get any high value targets um, but I think getting the armor shred, look at how quickly Yasuo is working through his team. Because Yone shredded everyone's armor, Yasuo is able to just pretty much cut through everything there. Um, and we're lucky enough to barely eke out the win here. Oh man, it's too close, it's too close. Uh, see, we didn't have the luxury of having high health to really greed the late game, whereas this guy did. So I feel like this guy, like... He should be stronger, right? He's got like two Orn items. He's got Cho'Gath three, like a four, uh, four star or four cost three star, but no Shivana three. It's really interesting. I wonder how that ended up happening. But we get a Dragon Claw here. All right. Yeah, I guess it's good against Cho'Gath, but that's that's about it, you know. I wonder who's doing the most damage on this team. We'll have to check the damage chart after this game. So here we just roll down. We hit a Swain, which is an upgrade over Vlad. Doesn't really mean much. We want the Zillion, but, you know, can't always get what you want. So Dragon Claw and Lee Sin, because he's very important. He pretty much guarantees a couple of kills. And I think we want to swap the Lee Sin's position so that we're not hitting Tom Kench. We did have that in a few fights. Hitting set's really nice, so we end up trying to position him in the center there. I don't think the swap went off, though. Um, so a little, a little unlucky. Luckily, he targets a Tom Kench this time, so he gets a free kill. The last time he was in that position, he hit the Orn, so it wasn't that great. Um, but Tom Kench, again, isn't that important to get, so it, does it really matter, you know? Leeson, can he do it? Can he kick him off the map? He can. Nice. It kind of glitched out a bit. We were, like, getting kind of worried. We didn't want to lose to a bug or something like that. Uh, so now new game, or new round, last round. Try to look for Zillion, can't find him. Uh, we end up hitting him here, but like, there's just no way we can like use him, per se. Maybe we could have sold Aurelia, but is that really worth it to get Zillion too? Maybe it is. 
Uh, maybe we could sell Swain. Uh, maybe we should have sold Swain there to get Zillion too. I don't think Siphoner is actually doing that much. So we could have sold him, played the Yumi or an extra Yone, and called it a day there. Uh, so we move Lee Sin to the center this time. He did it fast enough. So hopefully we get a higher priority target. He ends up hitting the Tom Kench anyway. So Lee Sin kind of a waste, but it doesn't really matter. Our, uh, our two exile combo right next to each other really, really helped out and they were able to clean up the board there. So I think this one is a first place. It's weird, look at this. See what I'm talking about? The redemption like never gave value the whole game. It's kind of crazy. Maybe there was like one fight it did. So we probably mispositioned the redemption, but so much going on there, we were kind of just didn't have enough time to think over everything. But yeah, that's how you play Yasuo Reroll. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's hop into the next game. All right, we are into game three, I think. We have the Nasus chosen. Uh, we didn't hit the record button early enough, but that's an instant Jeweled Gauntlet slam. Uh, really good items for Nasus include stuff like Jeweled Gauntlet, Titan's Resolve, Dragon Claw, Bramble Vest. Um, any tank item or like the pseudo tank items like Titans or the Spell Crit like Jeweled Gauntlet, all going to be really good on Nasus. So that's what you're going to be looking for in the early game. Uh, here, it's a little tough decision. Is Braum or Nautilus better? I think Braum's slightly better because he's more tanky. Nautilus is better if you have a real team, but since we don't have a real team, I feel like the tankiness from Braum is going to help more than the crowd control from Nautilus. Um, but let me know which one you guys think is better. Uh, just make sure when you ask questions, timestamp it, because this is going to be like a three or four hour video. So just timestamp whatever questions you have, and uh, hopefully I can answer whatever comes up. But yeah, I know you guys don't always get the Nasus chosen, but that's truly like the only ways you could play this comp. Since there are so many options that I stated before, there's like Diana Chosen, Nidalee Chosen, Nasus Chosen, um, Yasuo Chosen. There's like one or two others that I'm missing. Uh, there are a lot of ways to just go for a reroll comp. It doesn't have to be a specific one every time. Definitely do not force a reroll comp like a specific reroll comp. Uh, so we get another Nasus, which is nice. Sell the Nautilus, make 10, and just go from there. An important thing to note, since you guys are watching this, I'm assuming you guys are around like platinum or diamond because this is a how to get to masters video um, i'll be making a how to get to diamond video like sometime next week uh, so if you are lower level definitely look out for that but uh, if you are at this rating like high plat high diamond like you already know don't level up when you're doing reroll because you're looking for one cost units and when you level up you lower your chance of hitting one cost unit so it's just very counterproductive if you if you level up, but just to make sure, cross all our T's, dot all our I's, like do not level up when you play reroll. For some reason, we're winning these rounds. Like Nasus is one of those reroll comps where you win the early game because Nasus chosen is broken. But uh, normally you're like 0 02 and you're like 60 health or 70 health by the time you're at Krugs, but for some reason we're winning, which is kind of awkward because. One of these rounds we're going to lose, so we're not going to be able to streak to get insane econ. And we don't want to level up to support our win streak because, again, as I stated before, we are re-rolling. So we get into the carousel. We really want a chain vest. None here, unfortunately. We could use a spatula to build divine spat, so I think that would be our next pick. All these other items are kind of suspect, though. Maybe rod would have been nice, but that got taken too, so I guess we have to take a sword. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the spat was better. Not really too sure. I think I wanted the spat, he wanted the sword in this situation because with spat, you can high roll to get a force of nature or you could just build divine spat in this composition. Divine's really nice on like Vlad, Morgana, Swain, those types of champions because they're gonna deal a lot of damage. They're gonna use a tankiness really well and you're gonna be running a bunch of divines anyways. All right, so we get the extra Nasus there. Let's see what comes out of this silly lantern. And we get like the worst items for Nasus. I remember this now. Yeah, we were really depressed because we have Deathblade and half a Runons, which I talked about it before in the Shivana game. It's one of the best item combinations for stuff like Olaf, uh, Shivana, like anyone who does like attack damage and uses attack speed. It's like the best in slot for those champions. But we already built the Jeweled Gauntlet, so that's not really a choice for us right now. So we're kind of stuck with the Nasus with these two swords. Like the champions that use Jeweled Gauntlet are Nico. Nasus, um, Aurelian Soul. There might be like one other champion that uses it, but uh, it's really not something that's like that flexible. That's why I always am a huge advocate of Hand of Justice because it works in literally every composition. 
a new shop. We get Yasuo's, but we needed him last game, you know. We didn't get that many of him, but <laughs> uh, we need Nasus now. So now we're on the Krugs. You know, remember how I talked about before, like how you don't want to win these first two rounds? We went three and two, which is nice for our health, but we really don't have much gold. We have 40 gold at this stage. Last game we had 50. The game before, I think we had like 55 or 60. And yeah, it's just kind of ugly. We even had a Lucky Lantern and... Um, I know that didn't give any gold, but, like, I don't know. There's just, yeah, that spatula hurts because we could have had Force of Nature. Um, all right, yeah, this game is it, looking bleak. Again, my friend's very negative when he plays TFT, but couldn't really blame him for being negative in this game. We're 49 gold. We're not even 50 at this point. It's just very ugly. Yeah, so I, I told him to build the Divine Spat and build an Infinity Edge on Nasus. Infinity Edge, it's not that great on Nasus because you really want two tank items on him and one damage item. But sometimes you got to go double damage because we got a lot of swords when we're playing an ability power composition, and that's really the only thing you can build. Notice how I did not build Zeke's Herald. Uh, reason behind that, Zeke's doesn't help Nasus at all. The only team item that works on him is Chalice of Power, and we just don't have any of the components for that. Uh, so the reason why my friend really hates IEJG Nasus is because uh, he played it a lot before, and he used to think it was a good combo, but like he lost like two or three games in a row with it. Uh, with this combo, he got like eighth, so he was just like swore off of it. But like I really had to do a lot of convincing to get him to build it. So it's like we're we're lucky that he slammed it. And again, it's all because his item combination was just super super horrid. But at least we have the bow. We could build a Titan's Resolve for the last item. I hope. Um, but we'll see what happens. So again, with reroll, roll down to 50 every turn. Um, a lot of people in my other videos in the comments section asked me like, oh, what does reroll on seven mean? This is what I mean. This is reroll on five. So it's a little different, but you do the same exact thing as level seven. In the Shivana video, we did it at level eight. Next game, I think we're doing a Zed game. So you'll see what I mean when I say reroll on seven. So we ended up getting torched that last round. Uh, nothing else to pick up here. We do get the Janus. We could play level 2 Janna if we really want, but we get a Siphoner there. We really need the Morgana to get to 4 Siphoner. That's the biggest power spike in this comp. So whenever you get Chosen Nasus, Siphoner's a lot better in the early to mid game, and Divine's only better in like the super, super late game. Like you need to hit a Lucky Swain to get a big power spike, and you don't get to choose when you hit Lucky Swain, you know? Like I would love to hit Lucky Swain every game, but if you have Siphoner chosen, you don't need to do that. You could hit Morgana instead. Um, but regardless, uh, you could do reroll Nasus with either Nasus because in the early game, he completely smurfs on everyone. As you saw before, like even though we didn't level up aggressively in the early game, he was able to take down a lot of different teams. And look at this guy. like He's level 6, we're level 5, but we're holding our own here. Even if we lost, it'd just be by like um, not too many units, except we get really unlucky here. This guy lives with one health. And if he died, we probably would have killed both of them there. But at this point, my, my friend is furious. But whenever you play TFT, you just got to gotta try to stay positive. There's no other way around it. We want a chain vest for Titans Resolve. No chain vest here. So that got him even more riled up. But again, like we can't control the randomness in TFT. So you just got to embrace it sometimes. Like I was laughing at this point. But maybe if it was my game, I would not be laughing at this point. See, we're stuck here because we're like, what do we even take? I said take the tier, maybe we could build a chalice and go from there. But yeah, it's I can't blame him for being a little disappointed. We hit the Jax too, which is nice for Divine. Uh, we're going to roll down to 50 again. Nothing here. Nothing here. Uh, I guess we could pick up, yeah, Yumi. Uh, Aurelia is nice. Yumi's nice. Now this board's getting a little expensive. Uh, probably swap out the Wukong. Uh... Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and that's all we could do here. We need to... Oh, we forgot to pick up the other Yumi. Um, but it's okay. Like, we might not even play the Yumi because Mystic's nice, but it's not, like, mandatory. Also, note that we are playing the Vlad for three Siphoner. And I know it's a little awkward doing that, but he's the best user of the Divine Spatula. And so, since we built it already, we kind of have to play him. If you don't have Divine Spatula at this point... Um, you don't need to play Vladimir unless he's like two star and you have some items on him and have nothing better to do. Luckily, we win this round. Like, Nasus matchups are so snowball y. Like, he either just lives to kill everyone or he like gets bursted down, like you saw in last game, where if that Talon died like just a second earlier, we would have 1v3'd. But 
Uh, unfortunately, that was not the case. So rolling down here, nothing, nothing. Uh, we get Vlad, which is nice. Not too many Nasuses. Again, the Yasuo game and now this Nasus game, we really didn't hit anything. A lot of people, when they reroll, they have three-star Yasuo at stage like 3-2 three, or 3-3. Three, three. But we are, I think, 5-4 off, which is quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you guys notice your opponents whenever they reroll, but I always see people hit it in stage three almost no matter what. And two games in a row, we have to wait till stage four to try to hit it. And it's no guarantee that you do. We end up losing that fight. 66 life, not the best, not the worst. Uh, I think last game we were lower than this, but we had um, a force of nature drop off a of wolf camp. I don't think that happens this game. Right, so we get a bow, which is useless. We get a tier. We get another spatula, man. We could have had three spatulas this game, but we passed on it in the carousel and we built the Sword of the Divine already. Uh, so here it, he's furious again because we don't have this, <laughs> we don't have the Chain Vest or Titan's Resolve, and that's really like the best item on Nasus, especially when you have this item combination because Titan's Resolve. Whenever you critically strike, you gain a stack of Titan's Resolve, and it increases your tankiness and your damage eventually. Uh, so it's just really nice. And here we all in because. Uh, we're losing every fight. We're also looking for, we just want to like power level after this because we have this divine spat that's kind of doing nothing. So we could like level up, put in more divine units or maybe try to find Morgana for four or Siphoner. Uh, but yeah, just very unfortunate here. We put the blue buff on Vlad because that's all we can do. Vlad, he uses the same items as Nasus. You want like Titan's Resolve on Vlad too. Uh, tank items are really good on Vlad and Jeweled Gauntlet's usable on Vlad as well. But yeah, we're getting destroyed here. That's 10 life. That's just disappeared, gone right there. Sell the Jaxus to get up to 40. And this spatula is useless. Like maybe we could do Duelist Bat, but who would even use that, you know? I guess Kale can use it, but is it really that, that great, you know? We can't even put the Six Divine in right now because we're too low level. So here's just a very awkward spot. So in my opinion, I think the correct play was just rolling down here um, just to pray that we hit this Nasus and we end up hitting more Vlads than Nasus. At this point, even more like rage and complaints are coming out, but it's just part of the game, you know? Oh man, rolling down to 20 after like, we were at 60 gold and at 4-1, I think. And then we were at maybe, I think 30 or 40 gold at 4-3 or 4-2. So that's like a ton of gold just disappeared there for no power spike. We're not even one off the Nasus yet. We're two off, which is, oh man, that, it sucks, you know. Uh, we end up building Duelist Spat just because we're trying to slow down the bleeding, you know. We have a Kale, so like, you might as well use it. It's the only person who can ever use a Duelist Spat, but it's really not that great without, like, Kale is not that great without the um, Executioner synergy. So new turn, new rolls. We get a Wukong for some reason. We get more Vlads. <laughs> and this this game's too funny. Like we're really just looking for Nasus, and we just can't find him. <laughs> He's the most important unit in the comp. We have two items for him. We're trying to build the third one, and we finally hit him just in time because we have zero gold now when we level up. So we are completely screwed because we're never gonna make it to level seven to find Morgana at this point in the game. So it's pretty much like give up here. I, looking back, like. Do we build ZZ Rot Portal here to try to play for six, or do we try to greed to get the Titans Resolve on this next carousel? Um, I'm not really too sure what the correct play is there. Luckily, we do have the Vlad three star, but both these units, they're not that strong without four Siphoner. As you can see here, we're like still losing with the three stars, and that's because we don't have four Siphoner. And four Siphoner gives a lot of healing. And yeah, <laughs> I could not believe this. He could not believe this either. Like, I said so many points in the game already where it's like he completely lost it. Like, trust me when I say he completely lost it all these times. Here's the debate, though. Swain for four Siphoner or Sejuani for Chain Vest? Take, like, maybe a minute to think about this or 30 seconds to think about it. Which one would you take there? <sighs> I'm still... At the time of the game, I wanted to take, to take Swain because I was like, just get the immediate power spike of four siphoner but he was very insistent on the titaners resolve and looking back i don't think swain like i'm not leaning towards swain anymore i'm kind of torn between the two maybe it's the titans resolve because 
Nasus is three star already, and he does get a huge power spike from that. But like you get the same power spike from four siphoners. So I really don't know. His argument was we can roll Morgana later. We cannot get a chain vest later because we only have one camp left. So it's super risky if we do not get a third item on Nasus and uh, Belt doesn't build anything and Bow doesn't build any other defensive item for him. Uh, so that was his logic. And I think he might be correct now that I look at it again. Because, yeah, it's pretty easy to hit a Morgana. But I was just trying to think, like, what's the best play to get 6th place? Uh, but he doesn't like to play like that. So he wanted to try to get the better late game, which is what the item does. But again, I, I don't really know which one's the best play. Um, I guess I'm leaning very slightly towards going for the Titan's Resolve. But when we were playing this game, I was very insistent on getting the... The four siphoner bonus luckily we're able to beat this guy so we're able to stop the bleeding there new shop nothing much to do again our econ got completely griefed because we never hit a nasus so we're just trying to get to 50 gold reach level seven reach level eight i don't think we're reaching level eight this game though based on this econ uh, but we really just need to hit a morgana it's really difficult to do that on level seven but we just need our level one so maybe it can happen all right so we lost the last round uh wraith camp now let's see what drops we got a Negatron, so good thing we got Titan's Resolve, you know. Uh, build a Zephyr there. Definitely need to be cheesing that as much as we can. And we could level up here, but if we do, we don't have that much gold to roll down. We don't have anything to put in yet, so it's kind of risky to do that. So I think we held off for one more turn. And here we get, uh, we, man, like getting these losses. Like, look at this item on this ASL. That's insane, right? <laughs> but here we level up. Uh, we roll because we're just looking for one Morgana, roll to zero, see what we hit. We have two stars of everything. We get a Yone, oh, that's, that would be nice later. We get the Kale too. None of this matters. We need a Siphoner because four Siphoner and two Siphoner, there's a huge difference. We hit it on the very last roll. We're not making it to level eight this game, but you know what? We got a very strong level seven team. And now we just need to play around with a Zephyr and always scout with Zephyr because you, as you guys will see here, uh, we end up hitting, like, most of our Zephyrs. Don't get anyone here, which is a little unfortunate. We hit the Pike, but, like, he's not that game-breaking. He has no items. But you'll see later in the game, we get such critical Zephyrs, and all that is basically from scouting and positioning. And if you want to try to climb and optimize your climb as much as possible, you're going to have to be scouting. I know a lot of people hate scouting, but, like, at the end of the day, you just got to do it sometimes. And I don't think we win this one here, but... If we had a better Zephyr, maybe we would have, you know? Oh, notice how that Talon had Giant Slayer. Again, Giant Slayer is a counter to three-star units. We have two of them, and his level one Talon was able to carry him. So that just goes to show what the power of that item is. So here we're just scouting, and we move the Wukong accordingly. And what do we hit? Nothing again. It's okay. It happens. This guy honestly doesn't have that great of targets because his carry has a Quicksilver, and his tank is kind of in the back. So, um... I don't think it, like, I guess he got a great ultimate off. But um, this guy didn't have, like, any devastating Zephyr. So it's kind of okay that we missed there, even though we would have preferred to hit someone else. Luckily, it doesn't matter. Nasus is pretty good against Katarina because once he hits her, uh, oftentimes it could kill her before, like, Hextech Gunblade comes into play, uh, which is a really popular item on her. Um, so here... Utility items, the name of the game, or a Vlad item. So getting maybe like a, another Titans would be the best here, but I think we opt for the Jeweled Gauntlet. Um, Morello is another very interesting option for Morgana, but since we have three-star Vladimir, I thought Jeweled Gauntlet was better, but some people might like the Morello more. Um, when you have Nasus, he pretty much kills everyone he ults. So I don't know. Maybe Morello isn't that important as it normally is on champions like Morgana. Also, once you get Swain, he has a Morello built into his kit, uh, so you could use that too. But I think, like, three-star Vlad, we want to build as many items as we can on him because he's going to be, like, our secondary carry. Ironic how the three-star two-cost is a secondary carry to the uh, three-star one-cost, you know? Because the two-cost, theoretically, should always be stronger. But here, we're scouting again, and let's see what we hit. Again, you can only face up to three opponents per turn. Uh, in most cases. So you look at who you last faced, cancel them out until you narrow down three people, and that's generally who you're going to face each game. So we get the TF here, which is very critical, so we finally get one of the good Zephyrs that I was talking about, and his team is pretty much 
Easy, easy win from here. Morello would have done really nice here. Morgana hit pretty much the whole team, but he's all clumped up. He's not spread at all. I really don't know why he's clumped up when he's playing, like, Cultus. PF carry? I don't know. That's a little sus. I, I don't know what comp this guy's playing, honestly. So not 8th. Pretty good considering the fact that we didn't have any gold this game. But yeah, we're doing hardcore sweat scouting again. Moving at the last second, we hit the Aurelian Soul there. Huge hit there. Um, and that allows us to win this round too. Onto the Krugs, we get three items here. We lucked out, got a Morello. Uh, but considering all the bad stuff that happened, the Titan Resolve was so late. We were like early picking a lot of carousels, did not get the Titan's Resolve. Uh, we were forced to build IE on Nasus. We had like two swords that we had to somehow salvage. We had to make Duelist Spatula on Kale, which normally is very good. Don't get me wrong, but in this comp, not so much. Like Kale's not doing like any anything in this game. I'll be I'll be quite honest with you because she doesn't have the what's that item called or what's that synergy called? The Executioner synergy. So Luden's Echo. It used to be built a lot on Morgana. I'm not sure if it works on her anymore. Um, but if someone does know for sure, because Luden's Echo does bonus damage to champions who are crowd controlled, and before she was Dazzler, and Dazzler crowd control did count uh, towards the Luden's proc. But I don't know if it does anymore because it's built into her kit now. But if you do know, let me know in the comments. So again, sweat, sc sweat scouting. I wanted to do a front row Zephyr against the set, and that's what we opted for here. And what do we run into? We went into an Aurelia. Uh, not too not too bad, you know. She has two items on her, even though it's like team oriented items and they still went off. Like disarm can be a little annoying, so it's not the worst zephyr, not the best zephyr. I'd say it's like top 70 percentile in terms of like zephyr quality. Uh, but this game gets really tight here. This swain is so scary. We thought we were out here, but somehow like Vlad and Nasus just healing each other up the whole game and we knock that guy out. And all of a sudden, we're in top three. I don't know how that happened, but we're in top three right now. The game was super tight, super bad luck for most of the game. At the end, it like kind of made up for the bad start, but like, you know how the game snowballs. Uh, so it's like better to have good luck early than good luck late. We end up hitting the Swain. Do we even sell it for the Morgana? I'm not really too sure. Morgana's only level one, but she does give enlighten to our Aurelia. So Aurelia disarming people is very key, but I don't really know what to put in here. I don't really think it matters. We end up going for Executioner to buff our Kale, and then I think we missed the swap here. Never mind, we got set. What a god. <laughs> I mean, we, we would have got two star Azir otherwise, uh, which isn't bad either, but that, that set's pretty scary, right? I'm pretty sure if that set hits our Vlad or Nasus, we just, our whole team disappears. But he ults the wrong way, and because of that, we get second place. Because, yeah. Set does percent health damage, and we have a lot of health, so... Uh, he just never got a chance to do it. So top two, not bad, all things considered. You know, that this is all from re-rolling. We didn't really use our brain that much. The only decision we made was all inning early, and that was pretty much it. Uh, I guess like playing the early game, you have to navigate that a lot. But um, after that, it's pretty autopilot, in my opinion. That's why a lot of people don't really like playing re-roll that much. The game kind of feels out of your control. But if they're strong in the meta, you might as well go ahead and play them. And if you have the right items for them. Like, sometimes you don't get to choose what comp you play. And even if you hate reroll, you just have to play it sometimes. We get a Zephyr here. We get a Zaya, which is really clutch. Uh, we went to get the Zaya instead of the Aurelian Soul because we thought he would swap positioning on his Aurelian Soul. Whereas his Zaya is a keeper, so we didn't want to move that at all. Uh, let's see how we do this fight, though. Nasus gets eaten up. So, unfortunately, despite all that, we are not able to pull out the win. Uh, but, you know, second place for this game, all things considered, is pretty good. So we'll take that. So let's get into the next game after this. Oh, yeah. And this was a game that he actually hit Masters on. It didn't show the LP, but I could show you his match history. And that was a game he actually did hit Masters. So I think he went, like, first, second, first, or something like that to hit Masters. I think the Yasuo game, this game, and he played one other reroll game before that as well. It was like a reroll Nico game. And unfortunately, we didn't have the recording on for that, but... He literally just played three reroll comps to get into Masters. And like, I'll show you guys one last game of uh, my reroll game to get into Masters. And uh, yeah, that'll be the last one. That's a Zed game.
Yo, what's up? We're in game four now, and again, as said before, spoiler alert, we're gonna be doing some Zed reroll. Uh, we got the crit, which is really nice. Uh, you want to start with bows, and honestly, like, never try to force reroll, as I was talking about before. You could force, like, some form of reroll, but not a specific champion. So, on that carousel, only tears and gloves, so not much choice there. So here, at this point, it's really interesting. I skipped through a bunch of the PvE rounds, but we have this Divine Wukong, or sorry, Vanguard Wukong, but we already have a Wukong, so I decided to pass on this. Uh, maybe I should have gotten it, because if I ever get four Vanguard, it's super, super strong, so I could have had Garen, the Chosen Wukong, and then hopefully get another Vanguard in my next shop. Those would be either Nautilus, or there's another two-cost one. I think it is Braum, and super powerful start, but I opt not to take it. I wonder if that's a mistake. I also pass on this Fiora because um, I already have a lot of 2 stars, so I'm honestly hoping to get to level 4 to get a level 2 cost chosen, and I feel like those are going to be a lot better since I already have a lot of 1 star 1 cost with Nidalee and uh, the Wukong. So sell the Yasuo, level up. I also slam the Thieves Gloves on the Wukong, but unfortunately I get Luden's Echo, which just does 0 on him, because Luden's only works on magic damage, so if your champion ability only does physical damage, Ludens just won't work at all. I don't know if you guys knew that, but now you know. Uh, it's like a common mistake that I see, and we like barely lose because of that. So if we got like literally like any other item combination, we probably would have won that one. So in this shop, nothing much to do here. Uh, I did not expect to get a Chosen because I passed on two of them, and if you get a lot of Chosens, uh, you see less in your next shops. Uh, there's some exact formula to it. I'll try to make a video on it in the future. Now we're into the next shop here. Uh, nothing good in the shop. Again, the only upgrade to our team is a two cost chosen and it's a little unfortunate. Our team, despite having level ups, despite spending a lot of our gold on two costs, uh, such as the, sorry, on two stars, such as the Wukong and the Nidalee, we lost both games in a row. So that's pretty worrisome trend in the future. We could have just went full loss streak with a lot of econ. Uh, but again, it's kind of our fault because we didn't take an early chosen. I know I said in previous videos, like, try to take the earliest chosen that you can get, and this is partly why I say that, um, but I just thought I'd get something better and I was being a little greedy, and maybe if I got better items on Thieves' Gloves, I could have won those rounds because they were all pretty close games. On this carousel, I don't get the sword, so I opt to get the bow. Uh, I already have one bow, I have the Thieves' Gloves. Thieves works in any single composition, so you could pretty much, like, I'm not tied to anything specific right now. So here we get a two cost chosen, but unfortunately Vladimir not that great. And also since I already lost three games in a row, do I even want a two cost chosen at this point? Because I want to just go on a full lose streak. Uh, so that's why I end up passing on this Vladimir, even though it's pretty tempting to take because I could go for something like reroll Siphoner. However, since I have two bows, not the best idea since I just won't have items for this Vladimir. So we ended up losing that fight and we found a Zed in this shop, which is really nice. And yeah, we have the RFC already. So at this point, you could try to think of what comps to force. That's either like a Zed comp or a Kale comp. And since we found the Zed first, I'll try for him. If not, I'll try to go for something like Kale. Other RFC users are something like Olaf. Olaf's pretty good, good with that item. So I can just kind of chill here with these two bows and see what happens. See if I get a lot of Zeds. Uh, see if I get a lot more bows and pretty much just have my comp a little later. So now this is a very awkward spot because... We are on a full lose streak, and then we happen to beat this guy, even though we lost to everyone else, and we don't have any synergies on the board. We only have two Vanguard, which is like not much considering we're level five. Uh, like five units, only one synergy, and it's like the first tier. It's honestly not that good, but somehow we still won, and that is really unlucky because now we have no streak. We leveled up, so we'd have no econ, and now we're just like, we're pretty much going to cry right now. That's all we can do at this point. So I'm just going to try to beat the Krugs and try to like recoup the game somehow because this is looking pretty bleak at this moment. So I get a spatula there, which is really nice. Uh, spatula is good because I could potentially go duelist spatula on Kale. And I get another bow there. So those are all really, really huge. And a sword. Uh, sword, it's okay on Zed. Not the best. Uh, you could build something like a Guardian Angel, you could build something like a Deathblade, but I think best in slot on Zed are RFC, Runons, and then a Quicksilver Sash. I feel like Quicksilver Sash and RFC are the two most important items, and then Runons is the best third item. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and slam those items here, just because with the Spatula, I could go something like Kale, and she needs the RFC anyways. Well, she doesn't need it, but she uses it very effectively, so I might as well just build the comp. 
or build the item and I'm not doing anything else with three bows. You kind of have to build the RFC at that point. So after losing that last round, a lot of people, what they do here, if their team is weak on three, two, you level up to level six and roll down. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of gold to do that. So I'm just going to hang tight and kind of just chill for a bit and take a couple more losses. Again, getting that win on stage two, six really, really screws up the game. Um, so you just got to try to make the most of it. Maybe it is right to roll down here, but after we level up, we'd only have 28 gold. If we roll down a 10, that's only 18 gold. So that's nine rolls without buying any champions. So realistically, we only get five or six rolls. And with zero pairs on our bench, a pair is when you have two of a kind of a unit. Uh, it makes more sense to roll with that little gold. But since we don't have any pairs, I decided not to roll at that point on stage three, two. Next shop here, we pick up another pike. You need the slayers for Zed. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a chosen slayer yet, or we don't have the third slayer, which uh, most likely in this case is going to be Olaf, not Olaf, uh, Darius, since Darius is a three cost unit. All the other slayers are much more expensive. The other ones are like Trindamir, Olaf, and Samira. It's really hard to get those since those are high cost units when we're only level five. And I'm not going to level up yet. I'm just going full econ because we had zero econ in stage two. So I'm just going to sack all of stage three pretty much and just try to get back into the game, stabilize on stage 4-1 at this point. So on this carousel, uh, I have the bow, so I want to just build the runons, and just getting a negatron is fine there. I need a second negatron to build a quicksilver, but if I pick up a glove here, I'm going to have a ton of incomplete items. So I have the extra bow, the extra spatula, and the extra sword, so I need to complete an item. Uh, theoretically, I might want a glove more because I want to build a quicksilver sash, uh, but Negatron also builds Quicksilver Sash, and I need to build an item right now. So we're just going to get the Negatron to build a Runons. Another option here, which would be interesting, is like a belt to build Zeke's Herald. But I don't think there is one there, um, and I wouldn't want to build that over the Runons anyways. Lucky for us, it's like my birthday or something, and we hit the Chosen Zed. And that's probably the best thing we could have rolled there. So despite having like kind of bad luck by getting that win on 2-6... Uh, sometimes the game redeems itself so you can never sort of like give up on your games because a lot of people throw away wins because they simply just give up and just because you had bad luck before doesn't necessarily guarantee you'll have good luck later but generally in games like tft luck kind of evens out over the long run so you just have to keep playing your best even if you get terrible starts uh, one mistake here i should pick up this teemo hopefully i sell the nautilus and buy the teemo because that is Okay, good, I do that. Because the two builds for Zed right now, it's either Spirit or Ninja. Spirit is really good. I think it's a better version. But you could go Ninja as well if you get a lot of items for Akali. Items for Akali are things like Blue Buff, RFC, and Infinity Edge. Those are really strong item combinations on her. So if you do have those items with Zed items, you'll essentially have two carries, one tapping a lot of stuff. So uh, if you have per perfect items, go for the Ninja variation. If you don't, go for the Spirit variation. So on this turn, not too much to do. Again, since we have the Chosen Zed, no pairs, no point in rolling. I know a lot of people, when they play this comp, they like to roll a little bit at 6, and I agree with that. Sometimes you do want to roll at 6. However, you only do that if you have pairs and stuff that can potentially complete upgrades on your board. But right now, we have a lot of 1 stars, but we have no pairs. So if we roll down to 50, pretty high chance we're not going to hit anything. So that's why I hold off on rolling. So we lost the last round, which is pretty bad. Uh, let's see what items we get. We have a crit, a tier, another spatula. So that's obviously like one of the best things you can get. And we got a ton of gold, which makes up for the terrible economy that we had from before. Uh, so building the force of nature, of course, because that is uh, the best item in the game, probably. And in the Zed comp, you don't need any sort of spatula items. Spatula items as in like duelist spatula a divine spatula, mage cap, like you don't need any of those when you play Zed. So building the force of nature when you get two of them is perfectly like it's the best item for the for this comp uh, from spatula. Notice how I don't level up here again. I do that because it's like really greedy, but also because our team is just zero economy the entire game. And because of that, we need as much gold as possible. So I save pretty much like four gold there by not leveling up early and I potentially take one more loss because of it. Uh, not the end of the world, but um, because we had such low gold, we really needed to 
uh, get more gold that round. So I'm looking at this guy because he had fortune. That's the guy we beat on stage 2-6. And so because he was able to cash out at 10 life, that makes it so he's not going to get 8th because he's going to get a ton of goodies here. And he gets 2 Thieves Gloves. He's on a 10 loss streak. 3 Thieves Gloves and like a ton of gold. Uh, so that's pretty unlucky for us because in this type of game, we're pretty much playing for not getting 8th. Uh, maybe playing for like a top 6, top 5. And that's about it. We don't have four spirits, so that's why I'm rolling right now. Uh, normally, you see me do what I call like a slow roll. I know this whole video is like, this is how to slow roll or like get to masters using only slow roll. But I don't have the luxury to slow roll at level seven. So I'm going to have to find a time to all in really soon because I am low health and I have, uh, I'm missing four spirit and I'm missing a lot of Zed. So I need to level up. Sorry, not level up. I need to roll down ASAP to try to hit my power spike in order to just... Uh, have a chance to hit and not go eighth because of it sometimes even though it's like low odds to hit something you still have to do it and even if you don't hit it it doesn't mean that it's a bad play it just means that that game that's all you could do because uh, sometimes you just don't hit and you can't control any of that uh, so here maybe i should have picked up the atroxes because i would have completed a pair but i think since i wanted to roll down a lot of gold i was just going too quickly and i didn't think about I'm hitting those. I'm really just looking for the spirit units, which I hit there. So I put those in for four spirit. And after this turn, I'll try to look for Zeds again. Uh, Thieves Gloves is good on Aatrox, Sejuani, and Kindred. I think Aatrox might be the best user at this point in the game, not Kindred, even though I end up putting it on her because Aatrox is just, uh, he's more able to use most of the items. There's, I can't think of an item combination that's bad on him. The only thing, the only stat that's bad on him is attack speed. Uh, whereas for Kindred, she pretty much can't use any of the defensive items, which she rolled uh, on this turn. So that's why I think it's probably better on Aatrox than Kindred. And also since Aatrox isn't core to the build, whereas Kindred is, I could sell the Aatrox and put the Thieves Gloves on Kindred later anyways. So I wouldn't really lose any late game value, so to speak. So on this carousel, I need to finish the Quicksilver Sash. So there's a Negatron right in front of us. So we just grab that. And now we're here. This is a very critical point in the game. We need to roll down to zero right now. We really want like a lucky dice from this. We don't end up getting it. We get two removers and another sword. Uh, swords, not that great unless we could build a Zeke's Herald because we already have perfect items on our Zed. But right now we just have to roll down to zero. We're at 25 life and just get as many upgrades as we can for our board. And again, we're looking for spirits, we're looking for vanguards, and we're looking for Zed. And luckily, we are able to get it just in the nick of time. Uh, all things considered, even though this game started a little rough, we did get some good fortune towards the end, and we're able to get the three-star Zed without too much gold, which is super, super good. And again, all that happened because we beat the fortune player on stage 2-6. And yeah, it's just... It's just unlucky sometimes. So I went ahead to skip to Raptor. We won both those other rounds, obviously. Uh, so here I'm just trying to think, like, what's the best composition I could play at level 8? Since a new set came out, no one's memorized every single composition of what to do when you get, like, a spatula or a force of nature item. So I'm just kind of trying to piece my way together. I think at level 8, I just add in another Mystic. Uh, Zillion's going to be the best one, but he's a legendary, so I doubt we're going to get him. But I can't use Shen, so then probably the next best... Mystic is Janna because Nico just doesn't do much. So I should be looking for Janna's to put in at level 8, and we probably should hit level 8 either on 5 1 or 5 2, uh, depending if we get it in our roll down. So with our items right now, I opt for the double Guardian Angel, which is, I think it's pretty good on Aatrox and Sejuani. The only bad part about this is that I have to build a Chalice of Power, and Chalice of Power doesn't work on Zed. A lot of people love having the team items. But on Zed, he doesn't use any ability power, so the Chalice of Power is essentially useless on him. So maybe I could have built one Guardian Angel and maybe build like a Spear of Shojin with the Gargoyle Stone Plate. That would have been fine too. I could have maybe gargoyled my uh, Sejuani and then put the Shojin on just like a random unit so that people ult faster. Here I make the mistake. I don't pick up the Janna. Again, like when you're in the game, you don't think of these things. Uh, even though I knew I wanted to put in Mystic next turn, like sometimes you just forget to see Janna, and I probably didn't realize that she was the best one to put in because I didn't do like the whole thought process that we did before. I'm pretty much just looking Brazilian, and a lot of times people pick up Shen for Mystic, but then when you're playing a comp and you're just looking for Mystic, you might forget that like, oh, I have Ninja and Zed kind of ruins, or sorry, Shen kind of ruins Ninja. Uh, so it's a little awkward in terms of that aspect, but I do end up finding another Janna. 
but I make a big mistake and play Ornn instead. I, I don't like this at all. I end up selling my Aatrox later to fit the Ornn in, and I think that's a big mistake. Ornn, when you're 25 health, shouldn't be played. Uh, I feel like Aatrox is a better champion, even though he's only a 4-cost unit instead of a 5-cost unit like Ornn. Uh, Ornn's ability is good, don't get me wrong, but I feel like Aatrox brings a little more power into the game, and he's easier to 2-star. Uh, really, really tough loss here because... We're at 16 life now. That means we probably only have one life left if we lose to a medium-sized board. And we might get lucky, squeeze out two lives if we have like a very small loss, such as losing by one or two units. So it's the next turn here. Again, I make this mistake. I sell this Ornn, uh, or sorry, I sell this Aatrox instead of selling Ornn. And that's just a big mistake because I really think that Aatrox is a better unit than Ornn. But sometimes, like, when you're panicking, you make these types of mistakes. And, yeah, just in your games, just put the Aatrox there. You don't have time to get Ornn items when you're 16 life. I'm, I should just be playing for, like, top four at this point since two people are dead. Or maybe try to go for fifth place. And when you're trying to do that, Ornn's not going to help you at all because it's going to take him too long to get the item. It takes four turns. So I have to survive the entirety of stage five. Uh, and if I am able to survive all of stage five, I'd probably get fourth anyways. Um, so there's just no scenario where the Ornn actually pays for itself. So on this carousel, Zephyr's pretty good. Luckily, it can't be used against me, but Zeke's on a zillion. That's going to be the best thing because, one, I need a zillion because we talked about it before, and two, Zeke's Herald is the best item for me right now because that buffs my Zed's attack speed. All right, so we threw the zillion in, and we'll just skip through these next two fights. I end up winning both of those. We only have 22 gold, so we can't really do anything with that gold. The only thing we could realistically roll for is Zillion 2-star, Orn 2-star, and Kindred 2-star. I am one off Kindred, but she doesn't have any items. Uh, but, yeah, unlucky. Gold Collector. <laughs> gold Collector is great if you're needing like an extra item on like one of your carries, but the only unit that matters in our composition is Zed. I forgot to mention, let me go back a tiny bit. You'll notice here I have terrible kindred items, so I go ahead and use the magnetic remover to try to get something better. While rapid fire cannon and quicksilver sash are really good on kindred, uh, for like a thieves gloves component that is, she's only one star so she's not going to be doing any damage, so I opt to use the magnetic remover to get a better item. And when you're at 16 life, it's just one of the risks you have to take to try to roll better items from the thieves gloves. I don't know if many players knew that you can do that. Um, such as like reroll new items with the Thieves Gloves. A lot of people just use a magnetic remover to like move Zephyrs in the late game or just to like rearrange the items on their carries. But it's just a nice little tip that maybe you guys can use in your future games. So here we get a Quicksilver Sash, which is pretty interesting. We could put it on either Zillion or Sejuani. Sejuani means that I guaranteed get a Sejuani ult. Zillion means I guaranteed get a Zillion ult. Not 100% sure which one is like for sure better. Uh, I end up putting it on Sejuani. Which I think is good because Sejuani does an AoE CC, but like Zillion ulting crucial targets, that's also really good too. It's really tough to say, but now that I look at it again, maybe Sejuani's better because the stun's going to matter more because Zillion, his only good ult target is something like the Zed, for example, but Zed probably isn't going to die. All the other units, like I don't really care if they live for that long. Uh, so maybe I just want to CC the other team, so Sejuani's probably the right call. But let me know in the comments which one you think is better. And uh, again, with the comments, like make sure to timestamp uh, your question or comment because uh, it's going to be like a two hour video. So I might not know exactly what you're referring to without the timestamp. Do we end up beating this guy? The gold collector actually paying off on the Kindred. We got two gold here. Again, I'm not looking for the gold collector from the Ornn item. I want something like utility or something with mana to put on my units so they cast faster. But <laughs> the gold collector is just funny. But sometimes you got to deal with it, you know? Uh, so we are at 55 gold. If we level up, we could just put in a random strong unit. That's probably what we're going to opt to do, because if we roll down, we're looking for either Zillion 2 or Ornn 2. Very small chance that we actually hit those without pairs on our bench. Uh, again, I did the whole magnetic remover trick. Uh, unfortunately, we get a redemption on Teemo, which doesn't really do much, because um, Teemo's probably like one of the last to die because he's long range, but maybe he has area of effect abilities that make him die. Let's, let's see in this fight. So Zed jumps across. Let's see if Teemo does anything for us. So Sejuani gets an ult, but she ults in the wrong direction. That was pretty unlucky. But okay, yeah, see, Teemo, <laughs> Teemo didn't end up needing his item, but it's whatever, you know. 
You know, Kindred with this gold collector actually did some work. We got like six gold from this, which is way more than I expected personally. Because I didn't know she killed three units in the course of the game. Uh, but yeah, here we're leveling up. We're 16 life. We're battling out with one other guy at 16, one guy at 3 life, one guy at 1 life, one guy at 22 life. So even though we're on stage 6-3 and we did what we call like overpaid for the level, um, I think it's fine to do just because like we're really looking for just any sort of boost and even like a random unit even if we put in like a one cost useless unit without crowd control it's still better than nothing because our gold is literally doing nothing else for us uh, we end up going for a second yumi uh, so hopefully she heals more and buffs more people uh, because of that interesting items on teemo blue buff's going to be very good on him but uh, one thing to note with positioning you didn't see it here but whenever you're facing a lot of kales you want zed to jump either in the center or to the opposite side of the kale you don't want to jump the same side as Kale. So if they grouped up over here on the top right and the Kale's in the corner, you don't want to put your Zed on the bottom right corner because then he jumps to that side and then he ends up getting attacked by Kale. Uh, that's why you want him generally towards the center. I know in the last fight, Kale did end up attacking our Zed, but that was because his Kale wasn't in the corner. Typically, people do put uh, their Kale's in the corner. Uh, we grabbed the Yone just because there are no other good items there. Also, the Sunfire Cape, really good against a Siphoner guy, which we just lost to. So hopefully that's going to help a lot. Yone is also just a good unit in general. He's going to be doing a lot of armor and magic resist shredding. And we end up getting another Yone here. So we could just put him in over the extra Yumi. Um, maybe an extra Zillion might have been better. But Yone with Sunfire is honestly not bad. Eternal Winter is great. I think we put that on Sejuani. But just because she's going to live the longest. Eternal Winter, whenever you are next to someone, you slow their attack speed. And then after like a couple freezes, it like stuns them. So you want to put it on your unit that lives the longest. And that's going to be Sejuani. So I do a little swap there. Sejuani, since most people are positioned on the top right, I want her closer to those enemies. And that way she'll get a better stun off. So we look here. We're facing the other guy. Do we end up beating him? Uh, Zed survived this time, and we have the Sunfire Cape, so he's getting a lot less healing on his Swain and Nasus. So yeah, we end up beating him there. He's at 4 life, and we won on our board too. So that's really nice for us. Uh, so at this point, we're just rolling down, praying for Yone 2 or Zillion 2, and if we don't get it, it's whatever. If we do get it, great. We do end up hitting the Yone. Uh, he's like a no-synergy Yone with like not that great of items, but he's just a Sunfire bot. So he's going to be jumping around, putting Sunfire on everyone. This guy's putting his Kale on the top right, and since our Zed's jumping to the middle, we don't really care about this at all, and so it's perfect. We just don't want to jump into the Kale. And I switch my Sejuani, switch my Yone, everyone's going to get great ultimates. Yone's going to go in this direction, Sejuani's going to ult in front of her to CC the entire team, and Orn's going to call his Orn Horn in a diagonal, which is going to hit his entire team, so great positioning here. Uh, I don't think that was good positioning by him. Yeah, look at that. It just hits his old team, and this game wasn't even close, even though he beat us that other time. So that was it. This was my game to get to Masters. I think I was like Diamond 1, 50 LP right before this. And yeah, I don't deserve this win because, like, we got unlucky, and then we got really lucky. You know what I mean? Like, our, our beginning of the game was so trash, but after that, like, we got the Force of Nature. We got the Zed Chosen when, we're, we, when we have, like, 10 bows. And sometimes that's how the game works. You got to stay hopeful. In a lot of these games, remember what I was saying the whole time. I was like, when we were watching my friend's games, we got to stay hopeful. Eventually, you'll hit because everyone's playing reroll right now. So what that means is that all the units are being taken out of the pool. So it's going to be easier for you to hit as long as you're not contested for that exact unit. For example, if you're playing one cost reroll, such as Yasuo, if someone else is going Diana reroll, someone else is going Nasus reroll, uh, finding your Yasuo is going to be pretty easy because all the one costs are taken out of the pool. Uh, so just one thing to keep in mind. Hope you guys enjoyed this. The, we had four games of reroll, essentially. I think we had a Shivana game. We had a Yasuo game. We had a Nasus game, I think. And now the Zed game. The only one we didn't do was like Diana or Nidalee, but it's essentially the same concept, just different units. And if you are wondering what the comps are for those, like my website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta has all the different comps that are best for that week. And hopefully I'll be updating that again soon. But if you guys enjoyed this, go ahead, hit the subscribe button if you are new. If you liked it, like the video because that boosts me in the algorithm. And then when it gets boosted, other people may like it too, which boosts it even more. So there's this huge like snowball effect and it helps me out a lot if you guys do that. 
Um, it'll allow me to make more videos, get more guests on to the channel. But yeah, this has been a long video, so I'm just going to end it right here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.